Okay, when you're ready, please introduce yourself, introduce the run, give me a count of when you want the timer to start. When does your incentive end, by the way? Just the end of the run. That's fine, because it has been met already. Oh, um, it has. But in case anybody, in, in case anyone actually donates more to it for whatever reason, I mean, people can donate to it if they want. It's reached £118 out of the £50 it needed. So, oh, oh, uh, it's oh, wow. Actually, it, it's been well exceed, it well exceeded its target. But yeah, please introduce yourself, introduce the run, give me a count of when you want the timer to start, tell me when the timer starts, tell me when this timer ends, and we will go from there. All right. So, uh, my name's Tef14, and uh, this is Sneak King. Now, I've been running this game for about well, almost 10 years now. Well, a little bit, no, about 10 years or so. Which is pretty crazy, considering what it is. Um, I think the easiest way to explain what this game is probably would just be to see it, because uh, it's you kind of got to see it to believe it. So, uh, timing will begin when I hit A on this screen right here. So, three, two, one, go. The game starts off with a lovely, riveting, like seven-second loading screen or so. And, uh, yeah, so we're playing as the Burger King. Uh, the object of this game is pretty simple. Basically, we just run up to people uh, who are hungry, and you can tell if they're hungry based on the little icon above their head. And you, uh, covertly deliver Burger King food products to them. Now, I know what a lot of people do. And of all the games in the world that could have speed ran, this is a game that you chose. Yes, yes it is. Um, and it's mostly because it's weird, <laughs> and uh, nobody was really looking at it. I thought it would be kind of interesting. So the sort of gameplay loop of this game is uh, to complete challenges. Now we need to complete ten challenges in the first two levels in order to uh, beat this category we're playing, which is called 50%. Now, ironically, we don't really actually beat the game 50%. We beat it more like 25%, but... You know, it's sort of a marathon category that has existed for quite a long time. Pretty much since uh, people started running the game. So you'll notice that I've memorized the order in which I can deliver food to specific people. Uh, that's kind of going to remain a thing throughout this run. But if I'm being 100% real, there's times in which it's going to get a little dicey. Now, here's the first challenge that we have to do a flourish on, and uh, basically it just means when I stop that little gauge moving there. Most of the time, that's going to mean that I do a flourish level 1, because it has the shortest animation. Now, there are situations, though, where I'll use other flourishes when I need to get a specific amount of points for a delivery. This challenge here requires three flourishes, and uh, it's actually a pretty interesting challenge. There's a, there's a way you can save some time by... Looping through here, second delivery. And then we can actually double back to the guy behind us. Yeah, you can see on screen there, he he just happened to get hungry. Right as we were finishing up with the, uh, the other lady there. So yeah, but that's essentially the... Uh, well, the main thing of Sneak King <laughs> is just sort of trying to memorize all the different seed patterns you can get for the NPCs and hoping for the best. And what I mean by hoping for the best is while they're not exactly RNG mini challenges, uh, especially in this particular category, some of them are very broken, uh, meaning you know, a seed will get generated for the challenge, and then it just won't play out the way it's supposed to, for no apparent reason. Uh, we'll definitely see some of that, probably in this one right here. Although this is one of the first challenges that is pure RNG. Now, this challenge is a little bit unique. The goal here is to get a chain count of one. If you look on the bottom right corner of the screen, you can see the word chain. What that means is five deliveries without being spotted or, well, it just, just spotted. Now, if you get spotted, it, it resets your chain count back to 
back to zero. And our goal for this challenge is to get a chain count. We should be okay. We'll find out right here. Uh, no. So the game's gonna do weird stuff. I uh, know it still happened. Just happened a bit later than normal, I suppose. No big deal. So the the lady there that I just spent in the green hat, she uh she can get hungry a lot sooner. It's pretty rare though. I'd I'd give it like a one in ten chance. We got the average RNG there. So this challenge here is one of the first ones that has true RNG. We got really good RNG out of the gate, which, uh, of course we did. What'll happen is if I get a, an inappropriate pattern on certain challenges is I'll just restart them until I get the, uh, the, the fastest seed. And the way I know which seed I'm on is I'll look at the mini-map and I'll look for a green icon at the start of the challenge. We're making pretty good time. We're uh, about to get through the first level, actually. There's only three challenges left in the first level, and then we're going to the last level of the run, which is a decent bit longer, but it's still not very long. This is a short, a short run and a short category. Uh, this challenge here, though, is the only one in this run where we will be doing a delivery from a hiding place, because uh, that's the rules for this challenge. We need to do a single delivery from a hiding place. It always starts with this lady here. We can feed immediately as soon as this very long animation of the Burger King climbing back in and out of that truck finishes playing. So now, well, there's only two challenges left here. One of them is pretty far away, but the challenge is so short that it doesn't really matter that it's far away. We're going to go through this little door, and this lets us go to sort of the second area of the level. Now, normally there's a, there's a whole bunch of challenges over here. We're really only interested in one of them, though, which is this one right over here, where we have to do a Flourish Level 3. Uh, this is a pretty great animation for anybody who maybe has never seen this before. And one more challenge in Sawmill. We're moving on to Hold a Sack. This last challenge here is one of, is our first challenge where we have to focus on getting a specific amount of points. We need 10,000 points. And the quickest way for us to do that is to uh, maximize some of our gains. And the way we're going to do that is by having a very close range to this NPC here. And we're going to wait for that burger icon above his head to turn just like that. I'm going to do a floor level 2, which will give us 3,600 points now. We still need roughly 7,000 points, 6,400, I believe. And uh, luckily, this seed always gives us this guy next. We can just wait. That right there, floor level 2. And there's 7,200, just to... So now we're going to go on to the second level. Hold a sack. Hold a sack is... Uh... A little more complex. Uh, there's aspects of it that aren't too bad. It's the very first challenge here, we just have to do three deliveries. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Uh, I usually start by walking forward because sometimes this NPC here, this mailman, can be facing in a pretty non-advantageous direction. You feed this lady in the green dress. We've got about a 50-50 shot of that lady being the second NPC we feed, or the guy in the purple shirt. And then you got about a 50-50 there of it being the guy in the blue shirt, or, or this guy. Pretty pretty average stuff right there, nothing to complain about. Then we get, get to do what I like to call the, uh, the gauntlet here. Uh, wow, we got really good RNG right out of the gate. That's What we're going to do here is we're going to do a floor level 2 on this guy. And we're going to be standing on top of him just for swag. We're going to come to this lady here. We're going to give her floor level 3. Mm -hmm. 
We're gonna give her a force too. We're gonna catch up on this lady here. We're gonna give her a force level three. And that'll give us enough points for that. Then we get to do essentially the same pattern again. Or rather, hopefully. Two restarts. Two restarts. Not bad. So we wait for him to uh, get to a specific level of hunger. Because it guarantees that this lady over here will get hungry right and have, you know, right when we need her to. So essentially, we're actually manipulating the RNG by feeding specific NPCs at specific times from specific ranges and that whole sort of thing. I'm going to feed these two lovely ladies here. And then last will be this uh, lady coming out of this house. It's a challenge. Like so. That's a good example of a challenge going very right. <laughs> it's always very satisfying when that happens. And uh, if it continues, this challenge here will have the exact same order that we just did. The only difference here is that we have to do flourishes as well. Uh, which uh, we're just going to do flourish level once because again, that is the shortest animation. Like everything panned out. I'll know if I see a yep, there it is. There's a little green blip on the map. Good. We're getting down to the nitty gritty now. There's not a whole 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 lot of the game now. Some of the harder challenges are left, but uh that takes care of a lot of the longer ones. The next one we're gonna do here is actually very short. One of the other shortest challenges in the run. See this one here. It can technically be a little longer if we get terrible RNG, but we actually got really good RNG here. All we have to do is gain 2,000 points with a single delivery, and we can immediately if we get that RNG. Which, uh, you love to see that. <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to get 10,000 points in the same way that we did earlier and you'll notice i immediately started off walking to the right it was because this guy was turning around we need him to be a specific level of hunger luckily he's uh preoccupied so it's a good time to show off that weird mode where you can go pov now if we can keep our chain count and not get spotted one more delivery here will do the trick And I've found that the, usually the best way about this is to catch this guy right down here. Just like so. Oh, Alright, only four challenges left. And uh, I, I go out on a limb to say they're probably the hardest in the run uh, as a whole. Our first one here, we need to get 5,000 points without using any flourishes. Uh, which is actually very easy to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to run straight to this guy here. For that, yep, so that to turn yellow. We're going to come around this corner. We're actually going to wait right here. The seed's going to turn around right about now. -ish. Yeah, there it is. Yep, we're going to deliver to her right right around then. And then you can already see our last target here. And we got really good RNG. Uh, we do need to wait for him to get a little bit hungrier, though. And that should do the trick. Alright, only three challenges left. This next one... Uh, 
uses something that I've not really mentioned yet. Uh, it's called the inventory system. Basically, if I press the button to do a delivery before I'm in interactable range with an NPC, uh, the Burger King will essentially drop what I'm trying to deliver, which I've always found to be a pretty strange mechanic, but, you know, no big deal. This is really the only challenge where it matters in this run, uh, because you only get five inventory. And we have to do five deliveries, so no room for any mistakes here. Luckily, this challenge has a pretty set pattern that I've seen many, many, many times. And then last will be this lady in the green dress. Like so. All right, only two more challenges. Now this next one uh, is our first <laughs> skit, if you could call it that. The rules for this challenge are we have to do flourishes in ascending order, which would normally mean a force level one, followed by level two, followed by level three. Well, the game doesn't check if they actually happen in ascending order. It just checks to see if the value of the flourish after the one you just did is one away from the previous one. Oh, I messed up. Interesting. I was trying to explain. So uh, what we're going to do essentially then is we're going to do a force level 1. And then this guy painting the fence is going to glitch out. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> so instead we'll catch this dude right here. With another force 1. This challenge is not going well for whatever reason. Which is interesting because it's one of those uh, sort of shoe ends. Well, you know, at least the right pattern happened this time. I like how the NPC also turns around and he's painting nothing. Like, his arm is still moving as if he's painting a fence. Even though he's not holding a paintbrush. <laughs> or even painting the fence, for that matter. We're going to wait a moment. Cause she's going to turn. And then we can do a floor flip. All right. We're down to the final challenge of the run. And then time will be when I leave the level. I'll give a countdown on time as well. This final challenge here... We gotta get a chain count. Seven. Which can be pretty annoying. Usually, though, if that lady there gets hungry, we're in pretty okay shape. Because, yeah, this one in the pink shirt will be next. She got a little further in her cycle than I'm used to her getting, movement wise, but we'll be okay. Three, there's four. The next will be the mailman. Yep. Next will be this guy in the suit walking through here. We're just going to pass him and feed him in the way. And then last, in an ideal world, will be this guy working on his car. But it could be the lady in the, the lady walking down the stairs there. And it was the car guy. Yeah, and that's the last challenge in the run. Uh, there's other categories we have to do all the challenges or more of them. So we're going to go back to Sawmill for the donation incentive that was met, but I'm also going to give the countdown to end the run now in three, two, one, time. So yeah, that's Sneak King. It's uh, it's interesting. 
it's an odd speed run. Um, not a lot of people have ever really dared tread and run a game of this lack of caliber, I would say. But, uh, but yeah. I suppose, with that, we should go ahead and move on to the donation incentive, yes? Yep, so, final time. Sorry, I didn't know you were waiting for me to stop. Um, so final time on your on my side, at least 18 minutes and 17 seconds. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, so, obviously, the donation incentive has been met. So, yeah, we can see the donation incentive now. All right, so uh, the donation incentive uh, that was met, thanks for that all, everybody, by the way, uh, was to send the king to the Shadow Realm. Uh, we're going to banish the Burger King to the Void. Now, there aren't too many glitches in this game, but uh, what we do have is quite funny. So, one thing I figured out you can do is if you press A to do a delivery and you're not in a challenge or anything like that, the king will just sort of do this shrug animation like that, right? And uh, what you can do is if you can find a spot of, uh, you know, a bit of, I, I guess, geometry jinx, now we're kind of like scooting up that wall just a little bit. If you mash that button to make the king shrug, for some reason the game doesn't really reset your vertical position. We can use this on this spot on the wall here in the first level to sort of shimmy our way up this wall. And if we do it just right, something pretty interesting happens. Might take a try or two at most. There it is. So, uh, yeah, the king is now falling in the void. And, uh, yeah, we've banished the king to the Shadow Room. We can, however, and there wasn't an incentive for this, but uh, it's kind of always the cherry on top when I show this off. Uh, we can, however, rescue the king from the Shadow Room by interacting with this door from under the map to go through it, the house that we went through earlier in the run. Except for the king goes through it backwards, and uh, now we're just stuck and soft locked in this house at this point. So we're still kind of in the shadow realm. I don't. We're more. We're more like in the back rooms here. You know, we're in kind of like a liminal space, sort of, so to speak. Um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> thanks for meeting that incentive. It's it's always fun seeing what weird stuff you can do in games. You know. It's... Absolutely, always fun to see the weird things. Right then, everybody, that is it, pretty much, for Insta Yabathon 2024. There is some time for a few last-minute donations for anyone who wants to donate, of course. Exclamation mark donate in the chat will bring up the link to the donation page, of course. Um, and we have a little bit of time left before we finish off for the day. Um, don't forget, of course, the donations go to the Yellow and Blue Hub. Um, our current running total is 172 pounds and 20 pence, which is an absolute incredible total. I honestly cannot wait to tell them how much we've donate, we've raised for them. Um, but if you want, to, if any of the last minute donations want to be made, then please do so by typing exclamation mark donate in the chat, and that'll bring up the donation link. The donations go to the yellow and blue hub, subject to the terms and conditions on that page. Things like Prime subs, Twitch subs, and all that stuff as well. Uh, Twitch revenue, whatever constitutes Twitch revenue, we do, we'll donate half of that as well to the Yellow and Blue Hub after the event. Um, so, I think that is it. We, I will be going back to the intermission screen very, very briefly before we go back to my face, essentially, to close out the marathon and discuss what we're going to be doing next. But for the time being, Kafka, have you got any last things you'd like to say before we finish? Uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks again for having me. I haven't got to run this game in an event in several uh, several years, probably since uh, ESA 2021 in the summer. So uh, it's, it's good to get to show this off again. And uh, as always, a fantastic event. Thanks for having me. No worries at all. Thank you very much for taking part. And we'll hopefully see you again at the next event. Sounds lovely.